learning to control the marks that we make is probably the key thing in creating the sorts of drawings we're wanting. The marks are like the words we use when we speak. All too often we try to draw a scene without enough consideration of the sorts of marks that we need to say the thing that we want to say. And the greater the variety of marks that we have to use, the more nuanced, the more effective, the more meaningful our drawing can be in what it says. I have three broad categories of thinking about the marks I make. The form of the marks, the purpose of the marks, and the effect that I'm wanting to create through the marks. And I have three main things in each of these that I'm thinking of. With the form of the marks, it's actually the physical form of the marks. So we're talking of the thickness, whether it's from a single line or multiple lines drawn closely together. I'm also thinking of the length of the mark. How far one line or one mark goes has a significant visual impact. And I'm also thinking of what direction is my mark. And lots of marks lined up in the one direction has a very different effect too. Lots of marks lined up totally randomly. The second area I think about is the purpose of the mark. Is my mark creating outline? Am I defining a shape? Is my mark more connected with creating a sense of texture, such as the effect of all these leaves? Or is my mark concerned more with creating, with establishing value of some sort, of the light or dark, or of the local colour of a particular part of my scene? And in the third area, the effect that I'm trying to create, I'm thinking more of the scale of the object that I'm trying to create through my marks, or I'm thinking of the distance in the total depth of plane of my scene with where these marks sit and what they're trying to create at the distance from other marks. And I'm also thinking of creating form, of creating a three dimensionality with a particular part of the scene as well as the depth in the overall scene. This is by no means a comprehensive list, but it certainly gives me enough to think about to be able to make some decisions about what sort of marks I should create where for this scene, for these objects at this size drawing. So I start now with a 0.3 millimeter pen. I decide there's just too much detail to go any larger than that. And I want to start with this uh, part of a tree coming in from the left hand side and the section below that which are the closest details that we see. So I've thought there about about thickness. Um, I'm trying not to create an outline, a firm outline, because this is very much a highly textured edging because of all the leaves and the grasses. So except for the branches, I need to be very careful with my marks not to create lines that disrupt the form that's underneath. And I also have to be very careful with scale because we get a sense from our marks when we draw trees of if one mark looks like it could be a leaf, we tend to assume it is. So I either have to do marks that do reflect the leaf size, which can end up with a lot of very small marks, or marks that quite clearly don't represent individual leaves. I found this when I was painting trees. It's the same thing with the brushwork. So I'm working on this section, really just wanting to create the detail and get a sense of closeness with it all. So I am going for more definition. I am happy for my marks of the leaves to represent actual leaves. And just trying to really establish it. Gosh, it looks like the face of a fish or a chicken looking at me just there now, doesn't it? I hope that's gone by the end of the drawing. Just looking at the drawing in life. No, not particularly. <laughs> Once you see a face, you can't unsee it. Anyway, we'll leave that for now. So I'm, I'm just working now at trying to establish some dark areas of value. So, so because this is a, a highly contrasting 
image of light and dark, I'm, I need to reflect that and not to end up creating a lot of mid-tone, which particularly means I need to preserve my, my whites, my lightest areas. So I have switched to a, a 0 0.2 millimeter pen now for this section. And I'm just trying to establish uh, some of the main sections with these branches that, that spray across the road. And then there's the leaves that, that hang off it. Now, although it's the one tree, it's an enormous tree, and I'm using one brush and one way of drawing for the closer parts of this tree, and then I'll be switching to a one millimeter pen and a different approach to drawing the leaves for the further section. So at this point, again, I'm, I'm using my 0.2 millimeter pen to represent individual leaves or at least in some parts to represent that effect, but it does mean a lot of very small lines. And this section was the most fiddly part of the whole drawing. Again, it's, it's quite common that we spend a lot more time on the first part that we draw, both because it takes longer to position things, but also because things closer are in more detail and therefore they require more line work and more precision in the line work. And this is particularly true with trees and tree canopies. But as I'm doing this, I'm forever looking back and just trying to get a sense of the overall shapes of darker values with the leaves, of where shade and shadow impact the way the clumps of leaves look. So establishing some, some marks at the edges so that I can now come in from the other side, I thought would help me position things more accurately. So we've considered um, scale and distance and outline and texture and value and thickness and length of lines. And we have actually also considered direction of lines already because the leaves that are, the marks that are representing actual leaves need to be falling in the directions that those leaves will fall in. And so I need to pay attention to that particularly. So really all of the, the elements of of taking control of our marks that I mentioned in the introduction have all been important so far. And note those long, straight, smooth lines for the branches. They really do stand out because there are no other lines like that, no other marks in that form. Now with the values, I'm also very aware that I'll adjust those at the end when I have everything in place. So I don't want to go as dark as I'm going to go because those final adjustments are best done when we have the total picture, so to speak, to make our decisions on. But honestly, this section just felt like it went on forever. Oh, I can see another head on Fisher's face emerging, but that one disappears by the end, just looking at the finished drawing. Because the challenge, certainly for the way I'm drawing with this, is to draw the massed effect of the detail, which is part of what I love about these Australian country bush tree scenes, but create enough distinction that, that we still can make out what's what. We, we don't get so totally tangled up that we lose all sense of depth. So I'm, I've switched now to a um, 0 0.1 millimeter pen and I'm what I'm wanting to do is to position this, this unsealed road, as we call them in Australia, going off into the distance. I, I want to get the edges established and marked out in some way because I, I need those now to start to organise the things on each side of the roadway. And I thought if I use the point one, I can make just some lighter marks as guide marks for when I actually come in more detailed with with uh, when I get to that section of the, the drawing, I guess. So now again, I've, I've actually using a 0.2, I think, yep, at this point. And I'm starting to, to do the shrubs on the left-hand side, these very large, I say shrubs, but they'd, they'd be over six foot, they'd be over two meters tall, that line the left-hand side of this roadway. And here I am really wanting to particularly define the outer edge, the curved edge, because th that creates the form that then our brain can recognize. And, and especially if we get the 
changing of the scale going back. And so for each, each rounded shrub that goes back, I actually try and draw it with a lighter line, with a more delicate touch. So I'm controlling my marks, even in a straight line of things of the same substance and texture and edge and so forth. And that's also relating to the scale that we're seeing something at, how, how close or far it is and the scale they have to each other. And there's a similar shrub on the other side of the road, which is largely in shadow from what we can see. And I'm thinking I do need to start to define the roadway. Now I'm using a 0.2 millimeter pen for this section, even though it's relatively close to the front, I've decided I want to keep the left hand side having this a stronger sense rather than having the thought of both sides that, that the same closeness to us. And note the direction of my marks. I've, I've changed direction here because there's a lot of vertical lines when I'm dealing with the shapes and the shadows on the grass at ground level. And so again, line direction is very important. And again, it's important to create the effect of the grass, not to try and draw it. And I use value to create negative space for a lot of that. And now I have switched to a 0.1 millimeter pen for the, I'm doing the tree canopy of this tree further down the road again. And this is where I've now used different marks. I'm not using marks to indicate individual leaves, but I'm just trying to reflect the canopy as a whole. And I'm using fairly long vertical marks for that because I haven't used them anywhere in the tree canopy. And so I'm hoping they will stand out and look a bit different and that, that our eyes will be able to read them as, as somehow a different form in this great tangle of form. We do have colour, of course, to help with the original reference photo to sort out what trees are what, because the greens aren't all the same colour. And so I've actually switched to a, a 0 0.5, no, it's a 0 0.3, no, it's a 0 0.03 millimetre pen for this very furthest part up the back, not right this minute, I've just switched back, but doing the very furthest part of the, of the roadway, I switched to a 0 0.03, which is probably the, the lightest pen I've ever used. Uh, I think I've used it once before in a drawing. And I needed to position that so I could start to work out the final positions of all these central closer elements. And I also want to try and leave a very slight sense of space between the bottom of the, the leaf canopy and the, the, where the pathway goes into it. Well, roadway, not pathway. So I'm now also using a different set of marks for this large central tree canopy, but for the further sections of it. Again, I've used a, a fairly long diagonal mark to... Um, to just represent the canopy as a whole, tr trying to not get a sense of individual curvature of individual leaves. So I don't know whether you think that's successful or not, but it works for me. And so now I spend this next section working for the marks on the roadway. And again, I want to control the direction of them so I get a sense of the, the undulations in the road, the, the general curved camber of the road, but also the indents where car vehicles, wheels have um, eroded a bit of a rut on each side of the central hump of the, the roadway. So particularly in the closer parts, I'm trying to just give that more complex surface some definition. And I used a 0.2 millimeter pen uh, for the shadows on the road or a, or a 1, 0 0.1, because I didn't want those marks to get too dark. Although quite possibly right in the very foreground, I could have, I could have strengthened them. Looking at my final drawing, I think I actually could have gone darker in that lower left corner and possibly at the very bottom. I, I think I've left the marks there a little light. However, I'm um, now working on bigger picture decisions. I've, I've got most of the, the detail done. And I'm now looking at my photo overall, my reference overall, and I'm looking at now my forms overall, bigger picture, and thinking where do I need to increase value for, for local colour or for definition? 
I'm just defining that tree further down the road by adding some bits to the shrub that's the, or the bush that's behind it and working at the roadway and the foreground. Again, I'm just strengthening the value of some of these uh, further, further clumps of leaves in the tree canopy. And I realised I, I had left undone the foreground a bit more than I had planned. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. So what do you think? Have I established the scene in my drawing through the controlled use of my marks? Well, look, whatever you think of my drawing, why don't you have a go yourself? The photos on my channel community page. And look, whatever you draw and however you draw it and whatever marks you make and however you make them, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.